Great, thanks. Welcome everybody. Um, so I am sharing my screen at the moment, so hopefully you can just see the uh, the intro slide. Um, today's session is going to be very, very interactive, and I really, really, really need some audience participation uh, because it relies on processing some images. And I don't want to be the only person supplying images, so I need you to help me out, okay? Uh, and I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. So what are we going to do today? Um, it's really straightforward. There's not a lot of slides. I haven't gone into slide um, presentation mode, so you can see there's only six of them, and the first ones are just intro, and the last ones are thank you slides. So there's not a lot of slide stuff to worry about today. It's all seeing stuff in motion. Um, I need you to send some pictures. So you can do this while you're watching from either your phone or from your email client um so that we can get some images processed so get yourself ready if you can get your phone out or get your outlook or whatever email client ready and think of a couple of photos that you can attach uh you can even take pictures that right here and now it'd be great to see some people actually sitting at their desks um and watching and seeing what you're looking like um maybe not as super dressed up as, as i am over here but you know that doesn't matter we're all in lockdown and doing our best um so yeah you can send some photos in uh, and we're going to see them getting processed in real time and a bunch of cool stuff done with them. So before I waffle on too much more, uh, a really quick part about myself. Um, this is being recorded. So uh, and at the end, I'll be sharing links out to the slides. Uh, these sessions are recorded as well, will be available later on. But there's a bunch of stuff about myself. So I have my own company here in Dublin. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. Power BI uh, for the most part, and I help coordinate a number of uh, community events like the Dublin Power BI user group, uh, a, a new kind of Irish uh, conglomeration of all the groups we, we've put together as a weekly online thing. Uh, so if you don't know about that and would like to, to dial in uh, Tuesdays at 11 a.m., then uh, give us a shout and we can hook you up with, with joining that um, and, a, and a bunch of other stuff. So there's all my contact details if you want to reach out. Okay, first things first. So I need you all to email me a picture that I'm going to process. And here's how it works. And I'll be so kind and even put it into the chat window so you know exactly what to do. Um, I want you to send an email to hello at datalineo.com. OK, and that again, that can be done from your phone, from any client. The subject has to be this, face me. OK, case sensitivity doesn't matter if you do it in all lower. That's OK. Just don't put the space in. I see a few emails come through sometimes when I've done this session with the space in and they get missed out. So make sure you do face me all in one word. Um, so the other thing is to add as many pictures as you want. You can add one, two, three, four, five, whatever you like. Don't go overboard. Maybe it might take too long to process them. Um, and the only little thing is that they need to be added as inline pictures, not as like a paperclip attachment, if that's OK. Um, so hopefully now a couple of you at least are scurrying uh, away and looking through your gallery and sending some photos through. Um, what I would like to see, selfies are great. We love to see pictures of people. Um, there is some uh, facial recognition type of activities and facial um, attribute detection done. So that's really cool to see that in action. Uh, pictures of you and friends, it, it can detect multiple people in images, so it'd be good to see examples of that if you have uh, recent photos. Um, other stuff as well, it does object detection. So take a photo of your watch or your shoe or something on your desk uh, and send that through to me. OK, right. Hopefully some of you are starting to do that. And while it's happening, I'm going to look at I have a live dashboard in Power BI that's telling me who has and has not yet sent images through. So as yet, nothing's come through. That's OK. It does take a little bit of time and we have one through already. Neil, nice one. Great to see. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a couple of seconds and we're just going to look at really the process of what's happening. So on the slide. And don't focus on this. Keep sending those images through. We'll pop back and uh, we can look at this in a, in a bit more detail again. But we're using a number of different Azure and Office features uh, to make this happen. So to start with, it's Power Automate. Um, Power Automate, we've, there has been some other sessions including this earlier today. It's an amazingly new tool, new-ish. It's been around for a little while um, that will, I suppose it's a, it's a workflow tool that will do a number of actions for you based on a trigger. So the trigger, the thing that kicks off this Power Automate is when I receive an email into the hello uh, inbox 
and the subject is face me, then it will then it will kick off and do all the cool things that I want it to do. So the first thing it does, it will go through and loop through every attachment in that email. So if you have one attachment, obviously it loops through once, it grabs the attachment and stores it into Azure blob storage. While it's doing that, it also writes uh, the detail to my uh, Power BI streaming data set. You'll see I've got two Power BI icons or, or images on this uh, uh, flow chart here. The first one is a streaming data, chat, data set. Uh, so this means when the data gets uh, pushed into Power BI, it's immediately available on a on a live dashboard. Um, oh, great. We have eight emails received. Three of them were for me, so we have five coming through. Awesome stuff. Joe, Mark, great. Nice to see. Really, really delighted with that. Thanks very much. Hopefully, there's a few more coming through, but that's even plenty uh, to make this uh, usable session. So a streaming data set, which as you saw um, on the previous uh, view there, was actually um, showing those attachments and the, the emails and who sent them and the size of the images in real time as they came through. It's also going off and you'll see uh, it's writing that data to a SQL database in the cloud. So Azure SQL, it writes the contents of uh, who sent it, uh, the number of attachments and just some header information about what was in the email. And then it splits off and does two things at the same time. The first thing it does facial recognition. So it calls some uh, uh, Azure Cognitive Services um, APIs. The first one it does is, is facial attributes. Okay, so facial attributes is the, it doesn't know who you are, but it just looks at what it sees about a face uh, in the image or faces in the image. So if there's three or four of you in the, um, uh, in the photo that you attached, it will apply this to every face that it will recognize. Uh, and it looks for things like um, uh, your age. Yes, your age. So if you've sent photos of yourself, we're going to have a bit of an interesting view of that. Um, your gender, uh, whether you're wearing makeup, um, it's where your eyes are located. It also does more complex stuff like the tilt and the shift of your head and lots and lots of stuff like that. But I'm only pulling out what I really want to show you, and that's the age, the gender, and makeup things, and and your facial, um, your 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 facial uh, emotions. So we're going to see a bit of information with that as well. It writes that information to a SQL database, uh, and then it does another thing on facial uh, recognition. So I have my own database in Azure where I've uploaded five photos of myself, and it will go and compare all the images that come through and try and determine if any of those faces are me, okay? It's not a kind of a generic who's famous type of thing. I've created my own personal space. I can add images of people that I know and it will recognize them, um, but it's also going to see if it recognizes uh, any of the images that, that are coming through uh, against uh, uh, myself. Now, I warmed this up and I sent a, a picture earlier uh, today with a photo of me, so you will see uh, how that works. The other thing it's doing in parallel is computer vision. So this is effectively just object detection. What stuff is it looking for and what stuff other than people related things it, can it see inside that image? Uh, and this is basically objects. So it will list out um, one to many different objects that it finds in the image. And all of that is also written to a SQL database. Okay, so that's where it's gone through the process. Power Automate is managing all of those things. I'm going to really quickly open up uh, Power Automate and we're going to have a look at what it's doing. I'm not going to expand every single thing in this uh, actual flow because the amount of um, condition statements and things like that makes this flow explode quite heavily. You can see it succeeded uh, a number of times. So there's a few, there's one still running. Nice to see, but let's have a real super quick look at this and we'll see what Power Automate looks like. So the first thing we're going to see is it's nice graphical uh, interface. Um, not a lot of code uh, needs to be written in Power Automate. I would say as you're starting off in this product, you can write most Power Automates without having to write uh, any code. Uh, sometimes you need to jump into a little bit more complex stuff and there is a formula language behind it. Uh, it's a different language that to something that you might have seen before, um, but again, it just adds to the um, the, the power of what this can do. So first things first, you'll see it's it's nicely processed starting from top to bottom. And the first step is when the face me email arrives, if we expand and have a look at that, it says when the inbox, um, uh, looking in the inbox, 
and my advanced option will see if the subject filter is face me. Okay, so when those conditions are met, this uh, Power Automate will kick off. Now I've got a bunch of variables that I needed to use here because there's so many things that I'm stamping and grabbing along the way. That's what all those purple ones are doing. And then at the end, uh, for those of you who did send some images through, you may have already gotten back a nice email from me and it's beautifully formatted with what it found in terms of image detection. But let's have a look at this apply to each. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna loop through for every attachment it's doing a couple of size checks because some of the cognitive services APIs have file limitations uh, in size. I think there's a, it's either four or six meg, depending on which API uh, it is. So I have an actual third party product um, that's built into, uh, into Power Automate, which will reduce the image size. So if you send uh, a 10 megabyte uh, image through, I don't want it to just stop and die because the API doesn't do it, uh, doesn't, it won't accept that. I will take that, look at the size, and I'll resize it and then continue on to process the image. Now, without going through too much more detail, because this starts to expand into a fairly monstrous um, view, that's that's pretty much all I want to do on the, the walkthrough of the, uh, the flow itself. But you can see, if we go back, we'll have a look. Hopefully, there's a couple more come through. Yep, so a few of them come through. And if we have a look at our live page here, you can see that we had, um, you can see myself here, I had sent three emails before with seven different emails, uh, sorry, images attached, total size of 3.78 meg, great. And we've got a list of other attachments and another one just popped through there. Uh, so we're gonna have a look and see uh, how they came through at the end. Let's have a look now at our slide. So. With that said, all of those things happened inside that Power Automate. Um, this diagram kind of gives you a, a first level view of the process, but as you saw, there's a lot of if and else's and conditions that make this a little bit complicated. But again, it was done 99% without code. Uh, so it was very handy. And it was similar, I think, to uh, uh, what Sharon was talking about and, and other things that can happen with uh, automation of uh, tasks. So very handy in the business world. I've demoed this particular thing to a couple of customers. They love it, but then they say, yeah, how can we apply this to a, a business scenario? Okay, so all of the images have been processed. All of the data has now been written to a SQL database. We now wanna do our last thing and open up uh, a Power BI report that's gonna consume all the data written to SQL. It's also gonna be able to view the images that were stored in the Azure blob, and we're gonna do some basic um, analytics on it. But before I do that, any questions or anything like that? Nice and quiet. We're all good? Okay. So let's have a look at our Power BI report. So this is the one that I uh, created earlier, and these are the images that I sent through um, before this session. So let's have a bit of a wander through. So what we have is a nice list of all the images that were received. Uh, and as we click on one uh, on each image, it will show you specific details on, uh, obviously we see the nice image zoomed in, we see the number of faces spotted in the image, and this is only gonna be applicable if there was uh, humans in it. Uh, sadly, it doesn't do facial recognition or, or attribute detection for, uh, for puppies. That's my dog, by the way, we got him about four weeks ago. Um, and he's only a little bit bigger than that now. So he's a cute little fella named Alfie. Um, you can see that there was no faces recognized, obviously not. One object was detected in this image, and then it also gives me back a bunch of tags uh, related to that image. And then the last thing is up here is a basic one sentence object description. So for those of you who did send in an image, this is what you would have got back in your email. So you would have seen a table with if you sent one or two images, you would see a line for every uh, detection or every sentence that was, um, or sorry, every image that you attach, you'll see that sentence. We have here a list of the objects detected and you can see that it's kind of a parent-child structure. Uh, so you can see the, the parent uh, is a kind of a high level poodle. Sometimes it can be something like dog and then poodle just as it breaks down into a, a hierarchy, but it's even said miniature poodle with the parent object being 
Poodle, and then a whole bunch of tags related to that image. So you can see these tags, uh, grass, large, sitting, red, you know, for the color. If you went and um, processed hundreds and hundreds of images and then were wanting to filter them for, for example, red, it would allow you to, to quickly find all of your images that had, you know, some sort of element of, of red in it. That ball is orange, by the way, so don't know how it got that. Uh, sheep, yeah, don't know how it got that. Uh, some of these tags are pretty interesting, but we're going to see in a couple of seconds that some of these tags are very, very accurate. So there's a picture of me. I'll come back to that in a second. There's a picture of my goldfish. Um, you can see close up of a fish. Uh, the image tags, again, there's a goldfish, no faces spotted, 19 tags and one object detected. Um, is there other? There's my cat. Again, no faces spotted or recognized. Um, cat is mammal, so this one's a little bit less detailed than miniature poodle and poodle. Uh, cat sitting in front of a window and all the tags. This is a watch. Okay, uh, that image isn't popping up there for some reason, but again, you can see the object detected. Just the one, uh, 17 image uh, tags close up of a watch, you know, a fairly generic uh, single sentence. I will say that this object description can be interesting. If it's a fairly obvious uh, looking uh, item, this object description can be quite quite accurate. But if it's a mether of different things, if it's not very clear as to what it is, this particular object description comes back with some pretty interesting results. Uh, we'll have a look at this one. So this is where I took uh, I took six things on and stuck them onto my desk and took a photo just to see what it would pick up. So you can see I've got a mouse, pen, sunnies, stapler, nail clippers, and, a, and some oil. Um, three objects were detected, and you can see a computer mouse was one of them. Okay, great. Pen, yep, yeah, that's great. Uh, kitchen utensil quite generic, uh, so it hasn't even picked up the Sunnies, stapler, and the can of oil there. So you can see, and I, I have noticed so far, that the particular object detection can be a little bit weak, um, and I would like to find out, I'll chat with the Microsoft guys to see if if there's a reason why um, it, it's not very accurate. I'm, I've, I've seen lots of other demos that really pick things up well, but uh, in this case, in this particular photo, it hasn't really grabbed the the elements of that image. Um, image tag, again, boat, not sure where it got that from, skiing, maybe the, the color of the, um, the the desktop or something kind of threw it to give, um, to give those tags. But again, a little bit questionable, but all the same, that's what we get back. Now, the uh, photo of myself, you can see, so this one, you can see that there's one face spotted and one face recognized. So, uh, if there was three people in this image, um, it would see three faces spotted, as an example, but only one recognized because I'm the only person in my kind of recognition uh, database, okay? Um, you can see a man wearing a red shirt and smiling at the camera. Yep, pretty accurate. Uh, one object detected uh, person. Yeah, pretty accurate. Um, but I think also the image tags, really important to have a look down here and see that. Very, very accurate, absolutely. Okay, um, and the other thing that you might have seen popping up when I was mousing over these image was a little toolbar or a tool tip. So when these images are of people, I give a little bit more detail in the uh, the facial uh, expressions that were on uh, on the image. So if we just zoom in and have a look at that, you can see we get a couple of options there. So there's a combination of facial expressions that are available and then a percentage split of where it determines or detects that face to be um, showing its uh, its facial expressions. And you can see there's some interesting ones, uh, happiness and neutral. So this image of me is uh, I'm 70% happy and 30% neutral. So I obviously wasn't smiling at my best, um, but there's other ones like sadness, fear, uh, contempt, surprise, anger, and disgust. So I've really, really played trying to do all these faces, uh, and the one that I always focus on is contempt. 
I've always found that an interesting one that if you see a person coming into the room uh, and they have a certain face on them, you, you might say that that person looks surprised or that person, person is looking happy or maybe disgusted or angry, but it was always an interesting one, um, uh, contempt. And I mean, if I asked all of you to say, what does a contempt face look like? I don't think, you know, you could really describe it, but I did finally find out. And in simple terms, if you just move your mouth to the side, that drives contempt. And so if you're ever talking to somebody and they're looking at you and their face kind of moves to one side, I don't think they're really listening to you or enjoying your story. Um, the other one would be facial attributes. So you can see um, uh, it has detected me. So you can look here and go, yep, uh, it's detected that it's Ben Watt. So for any of you who have sent images through of yourselves or yourself and friends, that it's going to come up as unknown because it's not going to match any of the uh, images that I have in my kind of recognition database. Uh, male, yes, happy enough with that. Eye makeup and lip makeup is false. Great, okay, I wasn't wearing any today. And age 46, okay, I'll be honest, I'm 45. So it's close enough, I suppose. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is refresh because some of you have sent images in. I'm just gonna last check. Uh, yep, that's all we got in. So let's do a refresh. And I know there's a couple of little gotchas that might surface in this demo that images don't save properly in the Azure blob and they don't render here in this part. So I know a couple of you, if you've sent images through, they might not render. I'm just gonna look in my Azure storage to see if that was the case. Uh, no, they should all be okay. So this is now refreshing from a SQL database. Uh, it's looking at detected objects, uh, image tags, and, and all of the stuff that came back from cognitive services. And we're now going to do a wander through and see what you all sent in. Um, the other thing that you might have caught on the slide is this orange part. No photos are shared or saved permanently. Uh, I don't socialize any of them, and I delete everything later on. So um, just be feeling safe that I'm not going to be um, sending your photos out into the world. Okay, let's have a look. We have some images through. Uh, here's somebody sent some booze through by the looks. Okay, so obviously no faces spotted. Uh, nine objects detected, 32 tags. Uh, object description, uh, a bottle of wine on a table, close-ish. Um, detected, we have beaker and container. Uh, bottle, tableware, uh, that's basically what it's detected there. And then image tags. Uh, so up the top left here, we have the person who sent that in. Um, so Neil, uh, Neil doesn't mind a snifter of a nice whiskey now and again. Uh, and I'm just going to have a look at the image tags there, Neil. So it might have seen a reflection of you because it says woman in the image tags. Um, not sure, but what else do we have? Refrigerator group table bear you know some interesting stuff there um let's have a look at this one this was sent in by sharon okay sharon so what we have is a very busy looking picture of uh, a conference and in this case it hasn't been able to detect anything so not really sure why i guess it's there's not anything particular enough there it couldn't detect faces because i think they're too small uh, interestingly um, the cognitive services facial attributes can detect up to i'm going to say 255 or something like that I, it's something that i need to double check uh, it can detect a lot of faces in an image uh, normally but you can see this one is just the uh, the granularity is a bit too tight uh, i think to detect anything so bit of a failure there on that one Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so this was sent in. John, I think I see you there. Um, man wearing a suit, smiling at the camera. So, John, I can see you're chatting away uh, there as well. So, John, how long ago was this picture taken? Is this recent or, or what? Just put your comments into the... Um, uh, chat window there but you can see faces spotted is one recognize one is actually a bug of mine that i meant to fix uh, so that actually should be zero because it's not going to have recognized uh, john's face there so i do need to fix that one uh, two objects detected it's detected a person and a tie yep great 
Uh, and then image tags, front jacket, clothing, uh, business, yeah, glasses, you know, that kind of stuff. It's not too bad. And then John, um, one year ago, he said, okay, now, John, this is a part that you can you can take part or not. So we're going to mouse over and see what kind of. Okay, so your facial expression, 99% happiness and 1% neutral. Not too bad. Obviously, doing a pretty good job of, of smiling well. And it did not detect who you were, and that's as expected. Uh, age 38, John, uh, no makeup and no eye makeup. So, John, if you feel like it and you're confident enough, you can put your real age and tell us, or at least tell us if it's close enough to your uh, to your real age. Let's have a look at what else we've got. Age is correct. Thanks, John. Wow, not too bad. Okay, so in oops, in this one, I've unselected this picture. Okay, Joe Scully sent a, I don't think this is a selfie, Joe. Um, no, it's not. It's actually Donald Trump. Sorry, I got you guys confused there. Uh, Donald Trump wearing a suit and tie. Uh, faces spotted is one. Two objects detected, person and a tie. Same as uh, John's image, I suppose. Uh, 28 tags. Let's see if it gives anything cool back for Donald Trump. Bus, woman. Mm, I'm sure he wouldn't like to see that. Monitor. So train yeah some interesting stuff coming back there for sure uh let's have a look then we have okay mark god this is all gone political at the moment bill gates so this is another one that i found very interesting as well the object description will uh actually come back and give you the name of the person if they are uh famous so you can see that for the donald trump one it did detect him um i have seen in another demo where the person sent in a selfie and it compared them with somebody famous and they weren't happy with it, but um, they looked vaguely like that person. And it wasn't like a super um, uh, famous person either. It was some sort of um, obscure kind of uh, driver or, or a racing driver or something from Canada. I can't really remember, but it was something uh, interesting. But you can see um, Bill Gates, Margaret Hamilton, Barack Obama standing next to a man in a suit and tie. Um, I don't know who the man in the suit and tie is because they're all named, but you can see two faces spotted. Uh, and what we can do is mouse over and get a bit of um, detail on what it found there. Okay, so you can see in this image, there was two faces spotted. And as a way to kind of identify uh, who's who in these two, the, the 60D and the 7 that's just the, the last couple of characters of the unique identifier, just so that we know that this row here relates to this row here. So let's have a look. 100% um, happy, great. Uh, we have the second person who is 58% surprise, 37% uh, happy. Um, and what we can deduce is that was um, Margaret, because in this, uh, yeah, in the second row here, uh, her age was detected as 62 and she's female. So that kind of just by process of elimination, we know that it was her that was surprised at 58%. Uh, and then what I don't know is who out of the other two detected as the 40 year old male. So it could be, um, it could be either Barack Obama or Bill Gates. I'm not really sure. Interesting. Okay. What else did we get? I think that might be the end. Oh, we have one more. Okay, so this one was sent. Okay, so uh, Renji THVR11. Okay, thank you very much for that image. And um, what do we have? No faces. Obviously, we have a stack of flyers on a table. Um, and we have four object detected, book, cell phone, television and a bunch of tags with that. Now, I have a feeling there's some other images. Let me see. There should be a couple more. So I'm just going to do another refresh just to see if it didn't um, uh, miss any out before.
Um, so Sharon, is it you on doing Proctor or who is it? I actually don't know. That would be me. Okay. Uh, any questions or anything coming through? Um, uh, no, just comments about Bill's age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't have anything in particular. Um, okay. Has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask, or would you like to come off come off mute and talk to Ben? I do remember the uh, the time you had that famous person, Ben. I think that was when when you did the keynote in Dublin. It was, yeah. Um, I, I can't remember who it detected that person as. It was a bit obscure, but it was... Um, it was a sports uh, person or somebody. It like was, saying, yeah, right? yeah. Um, and I hadn't heard of the name, so I, I couldn't I couldn't remember who it was. Agreed. Um, okay, so you know what? I ran through that super quick and, and is the, the majority of the content. So I'm kind of happy enough to, uh, to take other questions uh, or deep dive. If anybody wants to deep dive on any parts of this, I'm, I'm happy to do so because um, I did run through this super quick. So Ben, I'll have a question. Um, what do you see as a commercial application for this technology? Um, so for facial recognition and, and the fa you know the, the, the facial part of it, um, one of my customers, uh, we did discuss potentially implementing this um, because they really want to understand their demographic. So the, the customer is a pharmacy uh, business. Um, and what we have is, is uh, um, we have a knowledge of, of a, um, a prescription that comes in. So you imagine that all the prescriptions that are processed in a pharmacy, you have the details of a person who's on that prescription. But what you don't have is actually who brought that prescription in. Because we have a huge amount of uh, demographic and age analytics for that pharmacy uh, from age brackets of 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and so on and so forth. But when they're trying to market and when they're trying to focus on how to correctly um, approach and discuss um, stuff with, with people coming in, for, for people like no child of, of age 0 to 10 is actually walking into the pharmacy and purchasing their own prescription. And in a very, very large number of cases, folks over the age of I don't know, maybe it's 80 or 90 plus, they're also not coming in. Um, the people that are coming in are probably in the, in the middle bracket. So it's people coming in for either themselves or for their children or for their own parents. And so we did have discussions and we did have um, uh, very good analytics of the patient, but not the purchaser. And so what we found was um, they really wanted to understand. Uh, so say, for example, if a if there's a particular chronic uh, disease that uh, is common, and we all know the, the most common kind of chronic diseases out there, if the actual patient is coming in, then they are more likely to want to stop and talk and discuss and find out how to take the medication because it's something that they might have to take daily and then they're coming back at least monthly to renew prescriptions. Um, they really want to stop and talk about it, and, and it's an emotional thing for them. But if that person's child, who's in the ages of 30s or 40s, is coming in, they don't want to say a word. They just want the prescription filled and, and to walk out. And they really want to understand, you know, how many people were coming in for themselves and how many people were coming in on behalf of somebody else. And there was no way to do that. So the, the only knowledge you have is the, pers is the name on the prescription. And they did consider, and, and ultimately did not go ahead with it, is to have a camera and just do a, a couple of days of analysis and try and detect uh, demographics uh, to see who was really coming into the store. Uh, so that was one scenario. Um, the actual object detection, um, that one kind of came up a little bit as well for them in terms of um, stock. So they, they wanted to be able to take photos around the store and to quickly detect objects uh, and, and look for, for products that were supposed to be there and weren't there. Um, that would be more about the, say, custom vision, um, where you're able to, to provide it with a number of images that it knows what they are, uh, and then take a photo and it would analyze that photo for all of the images and then look for images or, or items that was, were, were not in stock. Uh, it would be a really fast way to do stock take. Um, so again, that was a potential way to, to use the image um, detection or custom uh, image detection. 
Yeah, I think didn't um, was it Pepsi did a similar thing where they were checking their display stands were you know on the right level and all of those things. So the the reps were going around the the retailers and taking a picture and it was just comparing whether it whether it fit the contract. It was quite clear. Yeah, I mean, so you know, most places that you go into, most retail places uh, have a very very complex planogram process. And the planogram is effectively where everything goes. And and you know that when you go into a store and you're standing at the counter and there's sweets right next to you, they're, they're not like doing that by accident. Um, they're doing that because um, the person about to purchase is, is waiting for three seconds, is looking at shiny sweets and just goes and grabs something. Um, some of the retail places like um, um, petrol garages and so forth, when you walk into a garage, there's the kind of the, the pathway that you have to follow to, to walk from the front door to the desk. And sometimes they lengthen that path uh, so that you're, you're going around more shelves and potentially grabbing more things. And they call that the golden mile. Um, and, and again, they really need to be um, up to date with stuff that's missing uh, and to know that products are, are supposed to be positioned. Um, suppliers would be vying for, for positioning on those um, locations. So a supplier could go around to their own uh, retail customers and take photos and, and ensure that uh, they're, they're, what they've paid extra money to have in a more prominent position is actually positioned as, as planned. Yeah, I would think from a security perspective, what you were looking at there with the facial recognition, sort of understanding um, how happy or sad someone is, um, that again may help. Uh, whether that's looking at whether they're happier when they leave than when they arrive or whether that's spotting somebody who may misbehave, perhaps. Yeah, so for sure, there's already um, software out there. So through through a friend I know who owns a small convenience store, there is software out there already that will detect uh, people who've been walking around the store and maybe they've counted using the AI how many things that they've picked up. And when they get to the uh, till, if there's not that number of things that it might raise some sort of alarm. Uh, so that's already in place. And you, you've seen like the Amazon store where you just walk in, pick things up and yeah. walk out and it knows what you've purchased just by using AI. Um, I don't think there's a, there's a broad acceptance yet of when you walk into a place that it's detecting you and your age and your facial expression. Uh, I, I would feel that uh, a lot of customers would not be happy with that, even though it's probably happening a lot more than they really think. Um, so that that is one of the reasons the pharmacy said, look, we just don't want to cover that uh, just yet because one person writing a message on social media about that can be quite damning. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's I it's not. Joe's I don't making, think it's widely accepted yet. And Joe's making that point in chat. Uh, if you can see that, um, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, it is probably something um, I like. I don't know the definitive answer that, on that yet, but it certainly rings a bell that there there has been discussions on that. Um, and be it a, a particular GDPR requirement or even just staying well short of that requirement, people are probably not yet bursting into this um, facial recognition and, and age and, and so forth detection just yet. That said, I mean, I do think that uh, certain technologies are already using this kind of thing. I think um, Google is looking at pictures on websites and um, using that in the search algorithm, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, I'd say you could bet your bottom dollar uh, that there's, uh, there's stuff happening. Um, and what I wouldn't know if it's a lot more or a lot less than we think, um, because um, you know, the, do you remember the old um, website that came up and it was a Microsoft one called howold.net? Um, and <laughs> yeah. you used to put your, your face on, it would come back with a bit of a age detection and, and so forth. And there was talk and, and it's, you know, this is not a, um, a, a definitive answer on what was really happening, but some people have suggested rightly or wrongly that that was a way to capture images to use in these now uh, prominent um, cognitive services um, algorithms. Um, but to be honest, I, I think um, certainly from Microsoft point of view, being massively transparent has been one of the things, and you could see in the news recently that uh, Microsoft have taken uh, a lot of steps not to go ahead um, with with some um, projects. And, and I'm just trying to wrap my brain what it was recently, but it, it was it was mentioned in the news within the last few weeks about uh, this um, not quite being ready for 
broad and 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 un um, unmanaged use uh, just yet. So I think people are still getting their head around it, what the impact it is um, before people are starting to use it anywhere that they feel like. Um, so uh, I guess just to wrap up then, what would you think is the, the biggest learning curve about putting something like this together? So, you know, this, this is plain and simply a, a kind of a hobby demo. You know, it started off that uh, I'm a BI guy and the Power BI part of this uh, was the easy part. Um, putting this visual together uh, was very easy. Um, the the calculations and so forth that went into it, not that there was a huge amount of um, numerical calculations that went into it, but that, that was all part and parcel of my day job. Um, the thing that I've been spending a lot more time on uh, at the moment is Power Automate. Um, uh, it's, uh, so, you know, the Power Platform for, for everybody's um, knowledge is 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 Power BI and and um, and Power Automate, Power Apps, and um, geez, what's the other one? Uh, virtual agents. Virtual agents, yep. Um, so it, it's now become uh, a very um, broad and and powerful uh, solution and platform. Um, my career is is really focusing on Power BI, but I don't think for long I can live off that without needing and, and having to have the knowledge of, of other parts of that technology. The first one that I just moved into was Power Automate um, because I'm a, I'm a data guy more so. Um, so I leaned on that direction of uh, processing things. Um, and so for, for those out there who haven't used Power Automate, uh, I find out of all of the technologies, it's the easiest thing to get started with. Um, so if you have Microsoft Office in your work, uh, you will have access to it. There's a there's a limited number of things that you can run in terms of number of executions and so forth. But if you go open to your uh, dot 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 when you log into your uh, Office uh, account in work, uh, you'll see Flow uh, or Power Automate is there. Um, and the the very first thing that you want to get started with is templates. So a template there is tons of them. There is absolutely tons of them. And the easiest one to get started with is, I think it's the most popular one, is called Send Myself a Reminder in 10 Minutes. And so what that will do is um, start a clock running, it'll wait for 10 minutes, and ping your phone uh, with a little reminder to say, hey, you asked me to remind you, and here it is. It's not very complicated. It doesn't do anything useful, but it's a nice step into using um, uh, Power Automate uh, as, as a kind of first way to, to, to get involved with it. Uh, where is it? Send myself a notification. Even this one, send me a push not notification with my current location. So that one's even nicer. It'll grab your location. It'll pop up on your phone. It's um, it's a nice way to get started because it will create the flow. It'll create all the steps. It'll help you set up the various connections. And from there, you can kind of find your way uh, into editing that to suit your own needs. There's no setup. Um, there's not a lot of configuration to get it running. It's it's a platform as a service, so it's ready to run uh, and really, really easy to to step into. So I hugely recommend for those who've never used it before, go into Power Automate templates and pick one of these and get started. Pick the easiest one to get started with because you don't want to drown yourself with too much complexity um, and, and things that may go wrong and stuff that you don't have access to. But certainly, uh, once you've opened one and seen how it works, you find that it's really not that complicated uh, to do other ones. Um, one are you finding, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, are you finding the Power Automate inside Power BI a big attraction too, so that you can have an inline form relevant to your data and updating your data? Yeah. So if you look historically, and historically now is like two years, um, Power BI was a very um, data-centric tool. It was born from a number of different products that were developed that all came together and got married as Power BI. So it was a data, uh, a data explorer, which is now what we know as Power Query. The, the, data, um, the data set or the, or the data model, which was a, a kind of a desktop version of, of a SQL Server analysis servers, services. The visualization part, which used to be called Power View, um, they were, I think they were developed by various different groups within Microsoft, but ultimately they all came together and now Power BI Desktop is the culmination of them. We're seeing that same behavior now that Power Automate and, and Power Apps 
were actually quite independent. They had a very dotted line to each other for sure, but the, the, those dotted lines are getting closer and closer. Uh, so now again, a solution that you need to build at a customer can just quickly and natively wrap Power BI, uh, Power Apps, and, 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 and Power Automate flows up as a, as a very, very uh, simple solution without having to uh, think of three different things altogether. Um, you know, you can see that uh, already with, with Power BI, and this has been around for a little while, is that you can, you can publish Power Apps inside Power BI reports uh, and so on and so forth. So those dotted lines that used to be far away uh, are now getting closer and closer. Um, Excellent. Um, uh, the only last question I was going to ask you is, um, I, I believe you run the user group. Um, yes. Locally. Yeah. Um, so um, um, coming up as topics locally. There is um, there is a session on Tuesday. Uh, Bob Duffy's doing the session on Tuesday, and that's um, around uh, troubleshooting SQL and 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 getting SQL diagnostics. Um, I think Bob's on the. Is it Bob on the call? He has been presenting today, yeah. Yeah, anyway, so um, yeah, Bob's talking on Tuesday. I'll put a, uh, a link into the chat uh, where folks can find out where that is uh, happening and all the details to, um, I'm typing this out bit by bit, HTTPS. Sorry, hang on. There was also a little bit further discussion on the, uh, GDPR aspects of that data. You might want to have a quick look at. Okay, so I've just yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, so I've just put out the link. So what what the background is that yes yes I run the Dublin Power BI user group and we meet uh, generally on a monthly basis uh, uh, in person and we have speakers coming in from uh, around the country and around Europe. Um, and there are other user groups, like there's a Cork and there's a Belfast and there's a Galway, uh, both Power BI and there's Power Apps user groups. So we all kind of rang each other up and said, look, we're all dead in the water at the moment for our user groups. Um, instead of all creating six different online versions of ourselves, let's just kind of create one uh, and run it weekly. Um, so the, the Community Cafe was born um, and um, we've had three of those so far. And have we had four four of those so far? And uh, we got one more uh, coming up on this Tuesday, and it was intended as a as a uh, a five week pilot. Uh, the pilot has pr proved uh, very successful, so we are extending it now into mid June. Uh, I've got a list of speakers uh, lined up, uh, which I'll be publishing um, either over the weekend or or on Monday. Um, and so the the link that you have uh, that I've just put out there, you'll be able to keep in tune with. With that and, and RSVP uh, through the through the meetup uh, link. Um, so other questions uh, depends entirely what you store. Cognitive services won't retain, but if you store any PII, then it's subject to GDPR. Uh, yep. Um, also very large distinguish between legal and ethical. Yep, very true. Um, Joe, Community Cafe is excellent. Yep, also very true. <laughs> I think that's a great idea to bring all the communities together. That's that's really collaborating for all of the collaborators. So that's awesome. Well done. Yeah, it was um, it was a learning curve for for us in a number of ways. So the first thing was we learned a lot about Microsoft Teams. So today's uh, conference uh, is using Teams, uh, and we were able to help with a few of the uh, decisions and structure of setting that up uh, just through experience. Um, and also just getting speakers in, uh, setting up a time that suits. We had good discussions on that. You know, normally our user group sessions in the evenings would be at, you know, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. But now that everybody's working from home, um, we figured that they're at their desk anyway, and so there's no need to do those in the evening. Uh, it'll be probably less likely that people would uh, attend in the evening. So we picked a slot kind of not too early, not too late in the week, uh, not too early, not too late in the day, right at a kind of sweet spot when you could grab a cup of coffee, uh, sit for an hour and listen to one of our speakers uh, teach the, the topic that they know so well. Uh, so yeah, it's been going really well. We take feedback from attendees um, every week. Um, and um, 
the the feedback has been massively uh, positive. Uh, the other great thing that we found is the um, um, the location, the geographical uh, advantages were our user groups were in in cities, but people were are now able to join from anywhere. So we've had we have a map of of where people are joining from, um, and it's the whole country. So we've got. Uh, all around the country, including Northern Ireland, we have a Belfast uh, user group who are participating as well. And so the map uh, is, is truly covering everybody uh, who can now join. And we had some feedback on that regard saying, hey, I've never been able to attend these and now I can. Uh, so we, we are already discussing what this looks like after we finish lockdown. Um, do we let it dissipate and go back to our in-person versions or should we continue with some sort of online thing. Uh, we don't know what that looks like yet, but I don't think it's going to go away completely because the whole online world, uh, in my opinion, is going to continue in a way that it hadn't continued before after all this, for sure. I do agree. Um, I will be um, horrifically surprised if you didn't have a dashboard looking at the, the data of where people are coming from uh, yeah. as Power BI people. Um, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Nice comment. Um, yeah, uh, so that's my Chesterfield chair, Alan. And I get comments on it all the time. Um, I'm delighted with it. It's my thinking chair. Uh, I have two of them and I'll uh, be happy to say I paid nothing for them. We had some very nice neighbours of ours who moved and couldn't cope with them anymore. So I got two lovely Chesterfield chairs for free. I'm delighted with them. That's awesome. Yeah. Neil seems more obsessed with his whiskey than the, the fact that it called yeah. Norman. Wine is not whiskey. <laughs> yeah. I need a glass of, yeah, that's true. It would suit me, I think, Alan, glass of port. OK, yeah. Ben, thank you for that. That was an awesome session. Um, and I think it's really useful to see just how dynamic the data can be as it was sent in to you there. It was super live. That was excellent stuff. And your demo didn't fail, which is always nice to see. Yeah, so, great. Uh, um, so thanks very much, Sharon. Yeah, just to wrap it up, um, apologies. It, it, it was a lot quicker than I expected. I kind of came out of the gate fairly uh, rapidly because uh, I, I know we had to shorten the sessions a little bit, so I rocketed as fast as I could. Um, but hopefully we covered uh, enough for you to be interested. Um, I will put in the link the, the slides. Um, so on my last slide, you can see. So again, thank you very much. I'm going to paste this into the chat. And if you want to look at any of the contents that I covered today, uh, everything is there. So this, this slide is there. The Power BI uh, file is there. Um, I'll actually pop it open and see you get a, a, a mether of stuff to, to wander through um, that I'm sharing with this. Where am I? Where am I? Um, OK, so it's just a couple of files, but you will get uh, there's a PowerShell script. So this is the PowerShell script that I run after we're finished. Uh, and this goes and deletes everything. So this will go off to my um, Power BI um, streaming data set and empty it out. It will go to my SQL table and empty it out. It will go to wherever else, that the, the Azure uh, folder and empty it out. Uh, I've no problem sharing this because all my passwords are stored away. So again, you just need to grab yourself a config file. Uh, it tells you what modules you need to install uh, before you run it. Um, you'll get the version. So this is the structure of the config file. Um, so again, this is shared with you so that you just need to fill out if you have your own um, stuff that you just need to update those passwords. Um, this is a Python script. So just to be different, I've got a Python script to list out all of the images that are in my cognitive services uh, database of photos. So when I run this, I get a list of five images uh, that I've uploaded. But again, it's just something for you to see how to access um, the API data through some other way other than, say, PowerShell. Um, just a bunch of things that will uh, help you see how to go and manage the estate. They're the SQL tables, so I've got the scripts if you want to go and do your own. Uh, again, they're already there for you uh, and and the slide in both PowerPoint and PDF format. And as well, there's other sessions that I've delivered as well. But if you want to jump straight in, it's it's all in there in the link that I've sent out. That's and I'll wrap excellent. it up there. So thanks very much, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed that. Uh, and I hope you're having a great day um, and hope you have a great rest of the day.